And a warm good morning from Memorial. I see so many familiar faces out there, and it makes my heart to me. And that we have been covered so loyally. I'm going to tell you something about some of the committee members in just a little bit. But please stand by with me as we give thanks to God on this Memorial Day in Mississippi history and pay honor and tribute to our country and God. Captain Harold Garrett, United States Navy, retired, will give the invocation. Captain Garrett, sir. Let us pray. Eternal God, we pause, pause for this brief time on this Memorial Weekend to give you thanks for the blessings of freedom and liberty that we enjoy as a nation and as individuals. May we always be aware that these blessings are ours because men and women have been willing to serve their country. Many have sacrificed their lives in that service. God, we pray that you will bless all who have worn and who are today wearing the military uniform of our great nation. Grant that your divine presence may be with them at all times, wherever they are called to serve. Now, Father, we ask your blessing upon this groundbreaking ceremony for the Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial. We pray that this memorial will stand for the years to come as a tribute to Mississippi's 68,000 living Vietnam veterans, the 637 casualties, and the 18 prisoners of war are missing in action from the Vietnam War. We give you thanks for their service, their courage, and the supreme sacrifice. Our prayer is for this memorial to serve as a healing, teaching, and living legacy for the people of Mississippi all others who may see it. In your holy name, we make our prayer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to tell you again, but if you would remain standing for the color garden, if you will please post the colors.
transferring the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Certainly we apologize in one respect for the warm, hot weather, but on the other hand, what a glorious day it is. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before we continue with the groundbreaking ceremony <coughs> and celebration, which really in reality is for our long-awaited Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial, I also have some sorrowful news that I want to share with you. Very early Saturday morning, before dawn's light, Gloria Magnum Burnham, known to many of you, died from a massive heart attack. Gloria was a dear friend of the memorial. She was a dear friend of the members of the committee. And she became a dear friend of our legislators up there because she was in Jackson, and she was up there to see each of you down here in the front row. It seemed that when you saw one, you saw them both, and the other was Donna Yates. Donna and Gloria were best of friends, and of course, Gloria became involved through Donna, and as most of you know, Donna's father was killed Vietnam in a helicopter. She became very active and all the legislators knew her too. 
that several days ago, before Gloria's misfortune, Don had asked if I would include in my remarks a message that she had written and wanted to be expressed to you, not knowing that Gloria wouldn't be with us. So I think it's befitting that I read this message to let you know how close things were. Dear Gloria, I've known you many times during this past year, but I want to tell you again, in the presence of all these people who have come to witness and share this wonderful day, just how special you are and how blessed you have been to be my friend and a friend of the committee. You've been my strength through a very trying and emotional time for me. We've talked many times on how difficult it is for me to sometimes separate my professional task of raising funds to build a memorial and from my emotions which are attached to the memorial itself. Many times I just couldn't have done it, but there you were, always at my side. Many times you were my voice. Many times you were my sounding board. And I know that you sometimes felt like a sponge from all the crying I have done on your shoulder. You are always my strength. We all owe you a deep gratitude, Gloria. The Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee, the families of our casualties, the Vietnam veterans throughout the state, and we all thank you for all that you've done to help this day possible. I love you, my friend. If we could just have a moment of silence. Thank you. Well, it's always nice to get those hard things out of the way first. And now some of the good things. And even though I love our legislators and they're next, but first of all, I want my committee members and their families to stand up because there's darn few of them and families. Before I introduce our legislators, most appropriately, since they also symbolize government, state, and national, I'd like to introduce J.R. Bybee, who will sing our national anthem, J.R. Who see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red Bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave or oh, the very fortunate with the cooperation and support we've had from our state legislators. Many could not make it here today. Many expressed their regrets. In fact, it kind of got hard to keep track of just who was and who wasn't. So y'all would forgive me what I really want you to do because I want them to see your faces too. 
I personally can't go down the line and name everybody's first and last name, but would you please rise and face your public and you see how many of our legislators felt they had the time to come down and help us with this wonderful project. Now we got a couple up here too, my goodness. <laughs> You'll hear more of these two guys up on the stage, though. Next, a very important ingredient are the families of the casualties and the MIAs. Would all of you please stand? All the families of those that we are here to honor today. And you know an amazing thing? You're going to see some of these people get back up because now all the Vietnam veterans that are here in the audience, would you stand up? Thank you. The one gentleman that's here that, uh, you know, I was here, I'd gotten back from Vietnam and I was here during homecoming. I met a lot of fine gentlemen that got off that airplane. We got one that's with us today, Tom Collins, 36 POW in Vietnam, seven years at Hanoi Hilton. Tom, where are you? Tom Collins. Well, anyway. We sure wanted to mention Tom. Something must have come up, but uh, I hadn't seen him earlier, but there was a lot of you I didn't get to see. I was over at the VA cemetery and emceed that this morning and stumbled through it a few times, so forgive me if I get thick-tongued. It's for more than one reason. Another guy that uh, there may be others here, but he uh, he's been in three wars, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And every time I talk to him, he reminds me of that, so I thought I'd remind him of it. Billy Joe Clegg, where are you, Billy Joe? Is there anyone else in the audience that's been in World War II, Vietnam? And, all right, another hand out here. Another one over here, looky here, we got, that's fantastic. Really, really great. And they're still serving. A gentleman that uh, started out with us and certainly has been, and, and you know, you're always going to leave somebody out, but uh, this guy from the get-go started helping us with legal matters and things like that, and he was Mayor Bluxy. Gerald Blessy, where are you, Gerald? In the back row. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it gives me a pleasure to start introducing some of our speakers. I'm going to start out with the mayor of Ocean Springs, Kevin Alves. A joint meeting was held between the mayor and the board of aldermen at the city of Ocean Springs on March of 1992. And we had our committee there, and the result was a decision to move the memorial site to the city of Ocean Springs. We had looked at 26 different sites. These were personally conducted by many of the mayors and their staff. They wanted the memorial there. We were looking for a land, sea, air concept. We had one at Biloxi. As much as we love our casinos, we would have not been compatible on Point Cadet. Amen. In addition, we went down to Jones Park and discussed the possibility of it being in Gulfport things were a little unsettled and we had many committees to go through and after nearly a year we determined we still need to look for a home and it took us another year but this guy you know he's a Vietnam vet himself and he says let us show you the real spot well we weren't really convinced really because where's the water it's gonna be right out there that's gonna be a lake and this guy can probably tell you more about it than I can. But on May 25th, 1994, we made an official agreement between the city of Ocean Springs and the committee, signed, sealed, and delivered. An agreement conveys approximately five acres of land. That's expensive soil. And it's located 
right here. So without further ado, everybody knows the mayor of Ocean Springs. I present to you Kevin Alves. I don't know whether to call him Colonel or Dick or what. Boss, <laughs> thank you for that fine introduction. Good afternoon, good morning. Welcome to Ocean Springs, Mississippi, the site of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Most of you are sitting on the ground right now where the memorial will be laid out. To all the dignitaries here on the stand, and particularly to a great friend of mine, the Honorable Kirk Fordyce, the governor of our great state, for coming down with us, and Mrs. Pat Fordyce, I want to thank them personally for coming down today. They've meant so much to us. To all our senators and all our legislators, thank all of you for showing the support that you did for the funding to make this memorial possible. I'd also like to thank my board of aldermen. They're scattered over here a little bit. I see a few of them over here to the right. Would y'all raise your hand a little bit wherever you're at, my board of aldermen? I see some over here in the corner. I want to thank these guys, the current board and the previous board, for showing the support, too, that uh, we all needed making this come about. There's many things, though, that Dick was talking about when we first decided to, to look at this area and come to an agreement in the foundation and the laying of the memorial. And Dick did say that, and he and his committee members said, well, where in the world is the water going to be? I said, you've got to think about it a little bit, Dick. You've got to look over here, out here under that little hollow out there. And we're going to put a little water in the ground, and that's going to be that reflection water. That's going to represent a lot of things. He said, well, where else are we going to put all of this stuff? And I said, well, look, we already got a war memorial here at Ocean Springs Civic Center. And I said, right out beside of it, we're going to put the rest of this memorial. We're going to put that rock and that granite out there. And then all of a sudden, they started thinking about it a little bit, and they said, well, doggone it, Kevin, maybe you're right. Maybe this thing can work. So to the committee people who chose Ocean Springs, Mississippi, I want to thank each and every one of you, too, for your final selection. I think you made a wonderful site selection. I think it was good. <laughs> and how proud can we be in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, not just as Kevin Alvis is the mayor and the Board of Aldermen, how else can we be proud for all the citizens in Ocean Springs to be selected as a site, a home, not just for Ocean Springs, Mississippi, but for the entire state, the entire state of Mississippi and those surrounding areas in this country to build a memorial that will recognize and give the benefit of the, of the recognition of those men and women who served Amen. our country so well in Vietnam. Amen. This is a wonderful place. It's great. I'm just very proud to be here and uh, to, to honor those people that, that uh, have made this a real valuable part of my life. To the men and women, I see a lot of them out there, and I see some folks that went to high school with me. Glenn, Colonel Robinson's standing over there, I know that. I have to call him Colonel, I knew him when. Glenn, and I, there's other bunch of folks out here with us today. But I know there was a time at Ocean Springs High School when a bunch of us didn't think anything about the Vietnam War until some of our friends left and didn't come back. But I want to thank Glenn and the rest of these guys for the job y'all did, Glenn. It was a real valuable experience. After we turn the century here, we're heading into the 21st century, I want us all to remember one thing that the defense of this country lies in our hands. Amen. Don't ever let it go. From the folks from Washington all the way to the grounds of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, remember where we came from, where we have to go, and don't ever let the defense of this country slip by because it could slip by with the snap of a finger. To the men and women who are currently wearing the uniform of this country, I want to tell you if the time ever comes again that we have to do what we have to do, there is one person, there are many persons, there are thousands of persons that will stand behind you 
irregardless what you're called on to do, irregardless what decisions are made by the politicians, including myself if ever, the people of this country stand behind you every inch of the way and don't ever forget it. May God bless you. We love you to death and wear the uniform with proud because we are very proud of you. I don't have that uniform anymore. I can't get around my big old belly around that thing anymore. The only thing I have left to remember me by is my old bush boots. The dog kind of ate them up and they're kind of torn and tattered. I lost my bush hat. Don't know where it went. But I see some things out there that make me remember. And thank you for allowing me to remember. On behalf of all of us here in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, thank you for coming out today and sharing your time with us in remembrance of those men and women who served our country so well. Thank all of you. May God bless all of you, and especially those men and women who are wearing the uniform of this great country of ours. Thank you. Well, Kevin stole my thunder a little bit about our aldermen. Needless to say, they were in complete support of this. And I was really happy to see them again. We had a little reception for them some time ago, and then they were here also when we had our original construction uh, fundraiser. But you know, when you've got an entire community behind you and your state, you cannot lose. Our next speaker, certainly no stranger to not only anybody on the Gulf Coast, but throughout the state. A young man that when he was a state senator authored bill, Senate Bill 2576, that was then signed into law by the former Governor Ray Mabus in order that we might have this memorial. Not just have it, have it on the Gulf Coast. And it was made provisions that it would allow the counties and municipalities the authorization to donate public funds to the memorial and that this committee would be responsible for the development and construction of the memorial and all three of course are coming to pass i could tell you a lot of stories about congressman taylor one, he says, if I'm at any public function, it's only because there's a nip tide and I'm not out fishing. So he nicknamed me Nip Tide. Thank you, Congressman. But I don't think there's anything more I could tell you that you don't already know. And besides that, it's hot out there. And let me introduce U.S. Congressman Gene Taylor. And I think the southern pronunciation is Neap Tide. <laughs> Thank you. It's a, a great pleasure to be here. I, in particular, want to recognize the legislators who provided the funds for this. It's, it's long, long overdue. Thank you all for making that possible. 33 years ago yesterday, on May 28, 1962, Sergeant George Edward Collier of Starkville was killed in Vietnam. Almost 11 years later, on January 8, 1973, Staff Sergeant Albert Wayne Bush of Jackson was listed as missing in action. In the 11 years that that encompassed, 637 Mississippians would have their dreams and the dreams of their loved ones stolen from them. Roy, Bo Roy Wheat of Estabuchie would be awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroism and the sacrifice of his life, but most would not. We've been called a nation of hero worshipers, but sadly it's taken 33 years to recognize the heroes that are with us today. I want to commend our state for doing so. But we've only made a small down payment on the debt that we owe to our veterans. Today's memorial services across this great land, small groups of Americans will gather to honor the heroes of 22 decades in the struggles for our freedom. They will honor the American heroes that saved the world from the evil of Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan to honor the American heroes who kept South Korea free from communism, and they'll honor the heroes of Desert Storm, Grenada, and Panama. 
But far too many of our countrymen have somehow chosen to forget the heroes of the war in Vietnam. They have chosen to forget that on this day, on May 29th, 1966, PFC Sylvester Swinford of Potts Camp was killed. And then three years later, on May 29th, 1969, Corporal Chris Holliday of Meridian died for his country. I think when it's all said and done, people will look back 10 and 20 years from now and realize that the first cracks in the Berlin Wall did not appear in the 80s, but in the 60s. And that the first tears in the Iron Curtain did not take place near Warsaw or Hungary but in the Delta, and in the Central Highlands, and over the skies of Vietnam. Our country owes you for fulfilling the pledge made by a young president when he told the world that we would bear any burden, pay any price, in the name of freedom. You meant it. You gave your lives, and the lives of your loved ones. And there's one thing universal about all our wars, and that parents lose their children. Children lose their parents. Wives lose their husbands. Somehow, I think it was all worthwhile. I think we realize now that what you did in Vietnam stopped the Red Menace. And although you did not win the battle, when America pulled the rug out from under you, your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your friends and those that you left behind started the end of the Iron Curtain. And today, people in Warsaw, people in Budapest, and people in Moscow are free because of what you did. On behalf of a very forgetful but grateful nation, thank you for what you've done. Thank you, Congressman Taylor. Our next speaker, uh, also certainly not a stranger to the Gulf Coast, and with all the television coverage he gets up north too, uh, he's not a stranger up there. Personal friend for many years here on the coast, but I want to tell you something. On February the 15th, 1995, Senate Bill number 2640 was introduced to the Senate. A bill to appropriate state funds to the Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee for the development and construction of a Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Authors of Senate Bill 2640 were Senator Bucky, Bunky Huggins, Chairman of the State Appropriations Committee, and Senator Tommy Lott of Harrison and Jackson County. Tommy and I have had struggles different times talking about marine conservation and what's the best way to go and things like that, but you know, he considered my opinion, and he considers each of you, and we're proud to have him, certainly, as our senator here in the state at this time, Senator Tommy Gallat. Thank you, Dick, Governor, Ms. Fordyce, Congressman. It's certainly a pleasure to be here with a fine, distinguished group of Mississippians and honored guests. I appreciate y'all inviting me to be here. Let me say just a little bit about what happened in the Mississippi legislature. We first passed the bill through the Senate and went to the House of Representatives. There it got stymied, and then a bill came over from the House to the Senate, and Gloria and Dinah, they just wouldn't leave the legislators alone. All these legislators that are here, that's present, pushed for this, and Donna and Gloria really pushed the legislature. And it is indeed an honor and privilege that we pass the legislation to have a facility and to be here at the groundbreaking and the ceremony of the Vietnam Memorial. It is a great honor to have it on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and it will be here for centuries to come. And it will be an honor and a privilege to be here each and every time that we dedicate new and better things, and especially down here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. And I appreciate y'all inviting me to be here with y'all. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Senator Gallat. I would like to ask uh, any and all the members of the Senate and House Appropriations Committees that are here, would you please stand? What'd I tell you, huh? Very. Our next speaker, once again, February 23rd, 1995, an amendment to the House Bill 1703 was introduced to the House of Representatives. A bill to appropriate state funds to the Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee for the development and construction of our memorial. The amendment to the House Bill number 1703 was authored by Representative Tom King of Forest County and co-authored by just a host, in other words, all the other representatives statewide. And speaking on behalf of the House of Representatives in this issue is a Vietnam veteran and Air Force type, Representative Tom King. Thank you, Colonel. Governor, Ms. Fordyce, distinguished guest, and fellow veterans. I tell you, I'm really, I'm just a spoke, one of the spokes, a large wheel out there, and that's the way I feel. It's certainly my privilege and my honor, my privilege and my honor just to be here among my fellow veterans and my fellow legislators who helped me pass that, that amendment, that bill. And if it weren't for them, we wouldn't be here today, in my opinion. Now, thank you very much. You know, today we're honoring the men and women who died defending our country in previous wars. I have the privilege and honor of serving in the state legislature and being one of the many, as I just said, stated and proposed an amendment for this Vietnam Memorial here today. I'm a proud Vietnam veteran who served my country in 1968 and 1969 during the Tet Offensive. I make no apologies for defending my country in Vietnam. When others were fleeing their country for fear of the drought, many of us served our country and we paid our dues. Sadly, this cost many of my friends and your friends their lives. Never in the history of this country has a war torn our country apart with the exception of the Civil War. Let us never fight another war with such divisiveness as this. It's my hope and prayer that we may never enter into another war without the majority support of the American people. Amen. While most Americans did the course of the war were maintaining a business as usual attitude, innumerable families were suffering the anguish and suffering the agony that is experienced with the death of a loved one or the knowledge that a family member is confronted with the threat of death on a daily basis. The men who served with loyalty and patriotic dedication in Vietnam found themselves in a hopeless, in many respects, and inexplicable situations. It is unfortunate that this commitment, for the most part, has gone unrecognized and really unappreciated. You know, approximately 3 million and 300,000 and many thousands of Mississippians served in Vietnam. 58,479 men and women were killed. 303,000 were wounded. 519,000 came back disabled. Those 637 Mississippians who lost their lives will not have died in vain. Their names will not only be etched and granted, they'll be etched, they'll be etched in our hearts forever. <clears throat> Sometimes I wonder why I was allowed to survive and others were not. I don't know. Do you, Billy Broomfield? Do you, Mike Cheney? Do you, Mike Eats? I don't know either, but by the grace of God, we did. By the grace of God, this memorial is just a small token 
the return of the many lives of our brothers that were lost over there. Let us continue to honor these men and women and keep their memories in our hearts forever. Never let us forget them or the sacrifices that were made. If you know a veteran, thank him. Many still suffer from their injuries. When you see a veteran, thank him for the sacrifices he made. Thank him for the bravery and courage. Thank him for his patriotism. I'll never, I'll never regret serving my country and fighting for freedom and democracy in Vietnam. I love this country. I love Mississippi. I thank God I'm American. Thank you. God bless you. King, but that's the type of reception we've received throughout. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege and honor to introduce our special guest speaker, and he told me he's going to be short too, and he does understand it's hot, but you notice how many times you've been to any other type of thing that our governor and Pat have been there, and they sit right out in the sun, right along with the legislators and the folks that come there to listen to them. So. Prior to his election as governor, though, Kirk Fordyce lived in Vicksburg, as many of you know, for more than 30 years. And he earned a bachelor's degree in civil engineering in 1956 and a master's degree in industrial management in 1957 from Purdue University. I say that with tongue in cheek, and I'm a graduate from Indiana. <clears throat> That's like Ole Miss and, and the rebels, you know, the, the rebels in state, I should say. He was a member of Tau Beta Phi, uh, or Pi, uh, the Engineering Honorary, and Chi Epsilon, the Civil Engineering Honorary. Following graduation, he served two years of active duty as an engineer officer in the United States Army. So during our flood crisis, when you saw him in uniform, he was legal. Of course, as the Commander-in-Chief of the state, I guess he can wear about anything he wants to. At any rate, uh, he was the rank of colonel, and that puts him pretty dear to all of us vets also that, uh, you know, the guys that have been there and things like that, we have to turn to them sometimes to make sure that we communicate through channels. But he's also not just the governor of our great state, but he's also our honorary chairman of this memorial committee. So. We're very pleased at this time to have the governor here, Governor Kirk Fordyce, as your guest speaker. Thank you all very much. Please, please be seated. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that kind introduction, Dick. I hardly ever get one that good unless I'm introduced by somebody I appointed to office, which is frequently, actually. Um, Representative Taylor and um, Mayor Kevin Alves, and all the members of the Mississippi Legislature and fellow veterans and friends. It is really an honor for me to be here. I don't know of any place more appropriate for me to be this Memorial Day than here for this uh, groundbreaking ceremony of this memorial. Uh, and particularly because a few months ago, uh, Dick had me down for a reinvigoration of the fundraising drive for this uh, Vietnam Veterans Memorial. Uh, which, as he, someone said earlier, you're sitting on the site, practically. And I was privileged to see what the memorial was going to look like. I came outside here to see the actual site, and then we began to talk about the numbers. And I wondered if I really wanted to be the honorary chairman of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee because it was an awesome task that lay before us. Actually, of course, I was honored to be the honorary chairman but I want to tell you, members of the legislature, and Tom spoke for him, Tom, and Tommy Gallat spoke for him, Tom King, uh, thank you all for doing what you did because it relieved a great burden from us uh, that we're going to have to come up with that money somewhere uh, uh, else. 
These young men and women fought not only on behalf of the United States, but they represented Mississippi as well. With everything that our great state stands for, patriotism, loyalty, honor. More than 600 Mississippians were killed in the line of duty during Vietnam, and more than 18 are still missing. Vietnam was surely a test of courage for our young men and women in the United States as a whole. But when it came down to defending our country and their fellow soldiers, they not only gave their hearts and their souls, but they gave their lives. One of the most sacred things in life, I believe, is the opportunity to serve our country. When I was running for office in 1991, I never made anything about being a veteran until I appeared on a radio program on Saturday. Oh. There's a flyby in honor of all the veterans uh, right on time, says Dick. Should I continue? It's courtesy of the Mississippi National Guard. They buy an outfit by them. on this radio program, uh, most of whom were combat veterans of Vietnam, Korea, and World War II, said, are you a vet? And I said, well, yeah. They said, aren't you proud to be a veteran? I said, well, yeah, of course, but I don't feel that my service was equal to some others. They said, if you're a veteran, be proud of it. And I am, of course, proud of it. But the service doesn't compare to people who have suffered uh, so terribly in doing this service for their country. I honor all of you and all of those that are not here to attend this ceremony today. As you know, Memorial Day began in Columbus, Mississippi, or maybe you didn't know that. Columbus has been called the town where flowers heal the nation. Shortly after the Civil War, a group of women met to plan a way to honor those who had died during the war. The ladies gathered at the local cemetery to place fresh flowers on the graves of husbands, sons, and brothers who had given their lives for the Confederate cause. While there, an unusual thing happened. When one young widow walked to the area where about 40 Union soldiers were buried and began to decorate those graves too. Later uh, accounts attributed these words to her. Let us remember them all alike, the men in blue and the men in gray. So other southern cities had Decoration Day, but Mississippi was the first to honor the dead of both sides in the Civil War. And from this event, the nation's Memorial Day evolved. Mississippi has always been a place where we recognize the outstanding efforts of our fellow Mississippians, so it is fitting that Memorial Day began in our great state. Mississippians take the time to remember those who have given their lives because Mississippi is very unique. We still have a hometown standard of living. Mississippi is a place where people still know each other by their first name. It is a place where the neighborhood still exists. It is a place where people will go to church on Sunday and it is still a place where the family is paramount. And Mississippi is a place where we love our brothers and sisters in the military. The observance of Memorial Day is truly one of the most important things we can do to honor those who have fallen. I encourage you to continue this level of dedication in the years to come and to teach future Mississippi generations the importance of this very special day. God bless each and every one of you. God bless the state of Mississippi and the United States of America. I'm proud to be here with you. Thursday, I was getting real thick tongue. Well, it's nice again, as I say, to have all that support, but we're going to press right on, get this program over with, and in a few minutes, several shovels will dig deep into the soil and be turned. 
marking the beginning of the construction of the Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial. And this indeed is a Memorial Day in Mississippi history. The Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee selected eight individuals to share this great honor. And as I call your name, would you please join me at the foot of the steps and we'll go over to do the groundbreaking. First of all, of course, our honorable chairman of the Mississippi Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee, Governor Kirk Fordyce, author of the originating legislation, Congressman Gene Taylor, representing the city who has given this memorial a home, Major Kelvin Kevin Alves, representing the Gulf Coast Vietnam Vietnamese community, an individual many of us know, especially around the Biloxi area, Mr. Thomas Vu. <laughs> Representing the Gulf Coast Vietnam Veterans Association, their president, Mr. Mike Teeter, chief we call him today. <laughs> Representing the POWMIA families, Ms. Myrna Cody. And representing the families of the Mississippi casualties of the Vietnam War, Ms. Donna Leach Yates. of it you can hear from where we are as we near completion of this groundbreaking ceremony. Needless to say, we want to thank you from the bottom of our heart for sharing this momentous occasion with us. Now, following the benediction, the CBs from Gulfport Naval Construction Battalion will fire a 21-gun salute. So those of you over near that area, be alert. We're not being shelled or attacked. The Mississippi Highway Patrol will retire the colors with the echo taps. After the colors have been retired, Mr. J.R. Bybee will sing for us again. And of course, at that time, we will conclude the program. But before I call for our benediction, let me please thank a few people. Certainly, the City of Ocean Springs Public Safety Department and our dear chief did one grand job in controlling things and getting everybody in here. How about a nice hand for them? Every time we have a major get together, there's a guy named Cherry Lester that has Bratz Pro Sound. He's right back there on the sound machine. And he and J.R. Bybee always come to our assistance and make sure you can hear me. Like I really need a microphone. But at any rate, a nice hand for Bretts. Also, we're having a reception inside. You are invited. And this is courtesy of Isla Capri. And you know, as you can see, I've got Democrats and Republicans and everybody else up here. We're non-political and we're non-casino uh, affiliated. But by golly, they give to our community. And when you see those folks, tell them how much you do appreciate what they do give back to the community. The Isla Capri is hosting this. So, at this time, yes, thank you. I'm trying to find my benediction here. Well, Chaplain, if you'll come forward and give us the benediction, I found it here. Chaplain Garrett. Thank you, sir. Let us pray. 
God and Father of us all, we pray that what has begun today will be completed in an expeditious manner, and all who share in its construction will know a sense of pride as they honor their fellow service members with this memorial. Support us by your love. Give us faith in our country and a loving God who walks the paths of life with us. In the name of God who created us in his image, we pray. Amen. At this time, we'll proceed on with the ceremony with our state troopers. And I want to remind you about the MIA POW stamp. We are an official station, and you can get a first day cover, first day issue, right inside when you come in for the reception. We are the only substation in the nation right now with that stamp. So don't miss it. It's our stamp. And it's our substation today. Thank you.
will stand for just a second until we retrieve the colors, and then I invite you to come back to the reception. Just my children and my wife. I thank my lucky stars to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom. And they can't take that away. And I'm proud to be an American. Where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the men. reception going so everybody's invited don't forget there are t-shirts and the memorial stamp the other thing is the governor he's got to leave he's going to fly up north and do another reception and commit a uh, commem ceremony thank you governor thanks so much God, no, Bye. 
lành khăn tan và một dòng mưa thương mắt xin một vài khăn tan và một dòng vòng hoa tan và một hàng nến sang xin một lò nhang thiêng và mùi trầm 